In 1987, Nobuo Uematsu is tasked with composing the music for what Square thinks may be its last title. Square was having some financial trouble. Final Fantasy, the name came from uh, the finality of it. It was seen as the final project for the company. Basically, it was their one last shot at redemption. The story was, it was called Final Fantasy because, like, if that game didn't do well, that was it for them. So it was the final, you know, attempt to save the company. Near the end of 1987, Square releases Final Fantasy for the Famicom in Japan. Both the game and Uematsu's soundtrack win high praise. Final Fantasy, like the very first one, it saved Square, so they could keep on making these games. And gamers begin to take notice of Uematsu's music. One of the, the most memorable things about the first Final Fantasy is the way it, uh, it uses motifs like a, a John Williams score, a movie score. Each part of the game has music which sounds like that part of the game. When you go out into the field, you hear the exciting exploration theme. When you're in a battle, it gets tense. When you're in the ice cave, it's mysterious. At each stage of the game, he came up with a really great and fitting song. Many different styles that really strung together made a soundtrack. It wasn't just background music. One year later, Square releases Final Fantasy II, and again, the music is composed by Uematsu. Interest in the Final Fantasy series continues to grow, and people love the music. In my mind, Nobuo Uematsu, he, he really brought a lot of soul to the Final Fantasy games. Well, it's simple music, so it's easily received by people. It's easy to understand. And what I'm trying to do, also what Final Fantasy is trying to do, is not say something complicated. Nobuo's music becomes so popular that a CD featuring his work from both Final Fantasy games is released on December 21st, 1988. Like one of the most well-known sounds in video games is that victory sound when you defeat somebody in a Final Fantasy game. Like, da 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 Like, everyone recognizes that music if they played any Final Fantasy games. And also, the Final Fantasy II for Nintendo game had the score that was really beautiful. In 1989, Uematsu composes the music for Final Fantasy Legends on the Game Boy. One year later, he continues his work writing the music for both Final Fantasy III and Final Fantasy Legends II. In 1991, Uematsu's talent is given a little more room to soar when the Final Fantasy games move up to the 16-bit Super Famicom, which would later be released in the U.S. as the Super Nintendo. With his NES and SNES music, it was just brilliant considering what limited tools he was working with. He was able to get players to, to really feel and a story with the music itself, and a lot of people think that that's his best stuff. Even though he has more powerful tools to work with, they, they really think he just brought something really special back then. Uematsu composes music for the next three Final Fantasy games. And also lends a hand by writing some pieces for the hit RPG, Chrono Trigger. Final Fantasy VI was a graphical powerhouse. It was the most beautiful game you'd ever seen. It had a fantastic musical score. The music is widely considered to be Nobuo Uematsu's best score. It has close to a hundred tracks. 
each of the 14 playable characters has their own theme. There's a large variety of music for the different locations. For the enemies and bosses. It's just chock full of music and it's some of the best work he's ever done. But even with the new advancements in game hardware, Uematsu is still limited by technology. I think compared to what we can do now, limitations were huge. The amount of notes you can use were so small that you couldn't really do anything outside of what was provided in front of you. So even if I wanted to challenge myself, I think the limitations were right in front of my eyes. I didn't really have that much room to work with. However, a new system is just around the corner, and it will open up nearly limitless musical possibilities for Nobuo Uematsu. By the time Sony releases the PlayStation in 1994, there are 14 CD soundtracks featuring Uematsu's music in retail stores across Japan. The Final Fantasy games are now an established franchise, and Uematsu is one of the most respected composers in gaming. In 1997, Final Fantasy VII is released for the PlayStation, and sells over 9.2 million copies in its lifetime. Nobu just blows me away. I'll listen to like Final Fantasy VII, and I'll be listening to this music and this great orchestral scores and, and choirs and everything, and after Final Fantasy VII, I'm like, that stuff's amazing! There are actually a bunch of songs that I like in Final Fantasy VII. But Eris' theme is one of my favorites. Opening I also like the opening sequence where Eris walks out and the motorcycle goes by. And then you see the smokestacks. And then the logo pops up. And then, going from that transition into the actual game, That part is something that I'm very proud of as a team. Not just the music element of it, but how it matches up with the whole opening sequence. And thanks to the PlayStation CD format, the possibilities for Uematsu are nearly limitless. That was a huge leap. I did feel as if I could do pretty much anything that I felt like doing. And it gave me a lot of freedom to implement different ideas. The influences from some of Uematsu's favorite musicians begin to show more clearly than ever. I don't know if I would call it an inspiration, but there was a thought that I had in creating this piece. This specific piece was Jimi Hendrix. Take Jimi Hendrix and mix that with Stravinsky, the Russian composer. And it might sound very extreme, but I wanted to know what it would sound like to mix those two. At the same time, I felt as if there was a common element, and the result is what you have in the end of Final Fantasy VII. And his soundtracks go from being movie-like to becoming something much bigger. First of all, the big difference is